and now the latest, across the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October the 26th. Well, this evening, as we look across the world, we have two active tropical cyclones. One may not be one anymore, that being Tropical Depression Rick, which has rapidly weakened after making a Category 2 landfall in Mexico. We also have Tropical Storm Malu out in the open western Pacific, which could become a typhoon staying out to sea, thankfully. It's day 298 of uh, the 2021 year. Uh, we're getting close to day 300, and so far 83 storms have formed. Thinking more and more likely that we could potentially get to 84 or 85 by the time the week ends. Getting to the Atlantic Basin, we see one of those here, unfortunately, on day 147 of hurricane season. I wouldn't be surprised if perhaps this gets designated as an invest soon, as this is an extratropical cyclone that could bring some significant winds to the northeast, and then, as it heads further out to sea, could become a subtropical or tropical cyclone. Very interesting scenario playing out there. Let's hope, 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 hope that this does not become a tropical or subtropical cyclone. Looking the Eastern Pacific on day 163 of hurricane season here, Rick is a depression as of the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Don't be surprised at all if that is downgraded to a remnant low. We'll look at satellite imagery in a bit. You can't really tell there's, a, there's anything left of Rick there. The whole circulation has pretty much died out over Mexico, as you'd expect with the topography there. In the Western Pacific, it's uh, looking a bit active here. Malu is out to sea. Thankfully, going to remain mainly out to sea. We, it could affect some of uh, some of the islands uh, ahead of it, northeast of it. Uh, we'll look at the forecast cone from the JGWC on that in a bit. And 99W, we're now putting it at 70%, as it's gotten fairly well organized now. And the JGWC has issued a tropical cyclone formation alert today on Invest 99W. In the Northern Indian Ocean, there are no storms and no ALIs active. The system that I mentioned that could have some monitoring. Uh, last night has since decreased in guidance. There's still some guidance for potential formation, but at this time it's looking more of just rainfall, which is not too unusual at this time of year. In the southwest Indian Ocean, finally, we do have that area of interest here. 30% chance on this one now, as guidance has increased on formation. And could we have Wanda and Anna active at the same time. That would be an interesting mix considering Anna was the first name on the Atlantic list this year. Getting to the satellite imagery, we see a much different site than we did last night. A large extratropical system has formed off the coast of North Carolina and that has prompted some high wind warnings in portions of the northeastern U.S. As that pulls away from the northeast as we get towards the later part of this week into this weekend, we could see that take on subtropical or tropical characteristics. Again, let's hope that it doesn't become anything too big. Uh, you know, the, hopefully it doesn't become a named storm. Uh, but there is still that potential looking more and more likely. And you can see on infrared here, uh, not much of Rick is left over Mexico. And here's the visible. You can't really see any well-defined circulation. Again, it did make landfall though as a significant hurricane this morning as a category two on the Saffir Simpson hurricane sky. I believe it was with 105 mile per hour winds. So still a significant cyclone nonetheless. In the Western Pacific, you can see Malu is looking better organized than it was yesterday. The convection is really getting concentrated near the center. We could start to see some intensification here. Again, we'll look at the forecast in just a bit. You can also see 99W, it's looking fairly good right now. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. In the Northern Indian Ocean, we have some general thunderstorm activity here in the Bay of Bengal. You can see if you look towards the southern side of your screen, that thunderstorm activity is uh, reflecting up from this little bundle of thunderstorm activity. And it may be able to pick out a little low pressure area that is formed in the center of your screen. From what I could gather, this doesn't look to be the system that will become our tropical cyclone. It looks like the thunderstorm activity to the northeast of the system may be the main contributing factor to our tropical cyclone here if it were to form. We'll have to see if it forms. Again, interesting mix if we could have Anna and Wanda active at the same time. I hope that we don't have to deal with Wanda though at all. In the western Pacific and the South China Sea, you can see as the sun rises on 99W, the circulation is looking pretty good on, on visible, especially in the earliest frames. Uh, that convection is over the center. It is a bit exposed, so if it could perhaps 
expand the convection over the center a bit more, then we could see this become a tropical cyclone. But regardless of formation of a tropical cyclone uh, here, heavy rainfall is likely to fall in portions of Vietnam. It, they're already falling, as you can see just on satellite alone. Moving back to Malu, you can see the forecast from the JTWC does depict this becoming a typhoon on Wednesday, weakening below that on Friday as it starts to race northeast towards and become an extratropical cyclone uh, this weekend uh, out in the open West Pacific, thankfully staying away from uh, the, a lot of land areas. Again, some islands could be uh, impacted from this, however. Looking at the sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific after Rick, we might I can see a bit of cooling near Mexico where Rick was, which is to be expected uh, after its intensification phase. Where our extratropical system is right now, it's on, over, the, over the Gulf Stream, which is fairly warm, but it will be moving closer to the northeastern U.S., which will put it over cooler sea surface temperatures. However, as it moves further east out to sea, it'll get into a bit warmer sea surface temperatures. And again, we could see that become a subtropical or tropical cyclone. In the Indian Ocean, with our area of interest, the sea surface temperatures are quite warm. Uh, 26, 27 degrees Celsius waters, maybe even, maybe even as if you get towards the uh, equatorial region, maybe even getting towards 29 degrees Celsius. If you look towards the Western Pacific for Malu and 99W, they're both within favorable sea surface temperatures. And if we look at Australia and the South Pacific, as again, those seasons, as I've mentioned for a while now, are getting ready to start. They're ready to go for tropical cyclone activity. Looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies for all of the Southern Hemisphere basins, they're all generally above average where we tend to see those tropical cyclones. So we'll def def definitely need to uh, keep an eye out for tropical cyclones this season. In the Western Pacific and Indian Ocean is generally above average here. The Central Pacific is generally below average. You can see that La Nina pattern taking a full effect in the equatorial regions. The Eastern Pacific is generally above average. We can see maybe some near average pockets where uh, uh, Rick tracked, I almost forgot its name for a second there. And in the Atlantic, we can see a significant difference from last night. A larger area of near, getting near below average sea surface temperatures have popped up in the main development region. I'd imagine that is just due to time of year it is. The sea surface temperatures are now cooling off across the northern hemisphere basins and they're warming across the southern hemisphere. Getting to the on this day section for tonight, we have a significant very significant hurricane on tonight's uh, on this day. It's Hurricane Mitch of 1998. This one on this day peaked as a category five with winds of 180 miles per hour. And this would weaken, thankfully, uh, below category five intensity. I believe it weakened to a category one or two before making landfall in Honduras. But it brought very significant rainfall to Central America. Uh, some that is similar to the rainfall that we saw from hurricanes Ada and Iota in 2020. We also had Tropical Depression Lester dying out in the Eastern Pacific and Typhoon Babs was nearing landfall of China. I believe it would make landfall as a tropical storm there that was almost the end of Babs of 1998. Again, the Cyclone History page on Twitter is uh, bringing us these on this day sections each night. I definitely recommend you follow uh, or the in incredible uh, storms that we can see on the On This Day sections, and along with the incredible satellite imagery. This one, as you can see, is animated courtesy of Isaac from our Cyclone History team. All right, getting to the naming list. I hope that that system does not form in the Atlantic, but you know, chances are increasing. Unfortunately, the next two names here are Wanda and Adria. Adria, of course, being within the auxiliary list. In the Eastern Pacific, the next two names here after Rick are Sandra and Terry. And in the Central Pacific, the next two names are Hone followed by Iona. I wouldn't get my hopes up for any of those anytime soon. In the Western Pacific, the next two names after Malu got named right after our Tropical Weather Bulletin last night are uh, Neato and Rai in the South, or sorry, Northern Indian Ocean, where looking out for Jawad, followed by As Asani. Moving to the Southwest Indian Ocean and Australian region and South Pacific, again, we're getting fairly close to these seasons starting less than a week away now. We're looking out for Patty, followed by Ruby in the Australian region in the Southwest Indian Ocean. Could we see Anna within the next week? We'll have to see if that one uh, forms. 
And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody followed by Dovey. Thank you so much for watching this Tropical Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night. <laughs>